Hey, what is going on? Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jazz. All right, Zaku. Zaku's got some really cool stuff going on right now. Uh, this last round of changes they made to him uh, gave him a lot of really needed enhancements, I think. Um, some of the things that I'm a really big fan of that they did to him, um, they made his accuse ability recastable up to the maximum number of targets. So if you cast your accuse, you mind control all your buddies. Um, if some of them die, uh, you can keep recasting it back up to the maximum number um, ad infinitum. Uh, so you're not just stuck with your first cast until they all die. Um, another thing is they increase the range uh, on his gaze ability. Uh, so you cast your gaze. Uh, there's a big circle around the guy you cast the gaze on, uh, giving the uh, defense debuff. And now I think they increased the base range by four meters. So you can ma you can make, make that range absolutely huge now. Um, and also they made it so that his two uh, won't target um, gazed enemies anymore. Uh, his guns won't shoot incapacitated enemies or enemies that don't do anything if they get shot. <laughs> All right, so um, I have an umbral forma on Zaku, and I'm going to show you guys why. Um Probably not too many people uh, are going to be going for a build like this, but I think it's really cool, and uh, I'm going to tell you about it. All right, so as you can see, I crammed a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of armor on here. I'm using Elemental Ward. I'm using Cold for even more armor. I've got all three Umbral mods, um, and I've got Arcane Guardian on here as well. So I've got about 1,600 total armor, which is around 85% damage reduction, and here, here's why that's so cool. It's because of Zaku's fourth ability, giving you the 75% dodge chance. This is not the same as evasion. Um, the way the wiki describes dodge chance, it's, it's a 75% chance for um, projectiles and melee to pass harmlessly through Zaku. It's the same buff that um, Baruch gets uh, from his one ability, I guess. All right, so here's why this is so cool. Here's, here's how I look at it. Here's what I'm talking about. Effective armor points, right? EAP. Everybody talks so much about EHP. How much health do you effectively have? But what about EAP? Well, I'm about to tell you some more about it. All right, so if you think about it like this, all right, let's say, for example, we have 90% damage reduction. That means that it would take 10 bullets that hit you to do the same amount of damage as one bullet would with 0% damage reduction, right? When you throw in the 75% dodge chance on top of that, that means only one in every four bullets is actually hitting you, right? So that means it would actually take 40 shots from the enemy to do what one bullet would do with zero amount of, uh, ev I'm sorry, zero dodge or zero uh, damage reduction, right? So I say he's got 1600 armor, but it really feels like four times that. Um, actually, it's a little bit less because I only have 80, 85% damage reduction, not 90, but I'm just using 90 for the sake of this example, right? So it feels like he has like four times the armor he actually has. So people would say, you know, why would you put all this armor on Zaku? He has really low base armor. Well, that's why. It's because, because if you really do sit down and do the math, which I haven't done the exact math yet, but this evasion chance, or sorry, this dodge chance gives him really like four times the armor that he actually has. So that's why I stacked all this armor on top of him, okay? I also have a Karnas build. Uh, so this gives you the 75% damage, or, uh, sorry, dodge chance, uh, plus a 30% evasion chance from the Karnas set. These do not stack. Um, these are two separate rolls. Uh, so like if, you know, if the, um, if the game rolls a 75% chance for you to not get hit and misses, and then it rolls this 30% chance for you to evade and also misses, you're still going to get hit, right? Um, but it's just more of a chance to avoid damage. Um, so I'll go over both both builds here. Uh, with the Elemental Ward build, um, I would probably be using a weapon setup like this. I have the Sycharis on here just as a stat stick for Karnas, um, but I'm, I'm not using... Uh, I'm not using Karnas with uh, this Elemental Award build because I'm not using a heavy build uh, on my melee. Um, so let me just kind of show what this does uh, real quick. So what I would do is... Um, so I kind of like to play him. Jump into a group of enemies and hit my accuse, right? So all these guys are mind controlled. Then I hit gaze, right? I want to also have my vast on time up so the timer stops on those. All right, now for the duration of gaze and accuse. 
this guy will draw enemy fire, which I think is really cool. It's a really nice little um, uh, bit of crowd control on his kit. And then I can do whatever I want. I can take their guns and roll around and and um, melee them and hit him with my uh, condition overload uh, primer and all that stuff. Everybody dead? Almost. Right, so uh, you kind of get the idea. He just kind of controls the battlefield really well. And um, I'm actually using the new Vermisplicer kit gun as a condition overload primer um, on this build. Um, the only real reason to use this over a Kuva Nucor um, is if you really want to have your secondary reserve for something else, um, which I'll show you a use case for that in a sec. Um, also, the uh, Verma Splicer uh, will um, branch off to five targets from the original target instead of four with the Kuva Nucor. Uh, they both have, they both can do five um, procs, uh, five individual status procs. Um, the Kuva Nucor has a hidden one. Uh, Kuva Nucor has a hidden one called uh, Microwave. It's that effect that like makes the enemy's arms and legs bigger when you shoot at them. Um, uh, let me see, I have the wrong one on here. Uh, I want my magnetic one. Maybe this one. Uh, so you can see four over here, plus the hidden uh, plus the hidden uh, microwave one. It sounds like an enemy is still alive somewhere. There we go. <laughs> All right, so the build I settled on for the Vermisplicer is something like this. Um, gets, you, gets you five procs. Um, I, f I found that speed trigger get, gets me maximum viral procs a little tiny bit faster than if I use something like more status chance, um, like this, but you can if you want, you can experiment with them. I settled on speed trigger because I like it. But yeah, I'm using that as a condition overload uh, primer. Um, then if I were to switch over to my Karnas build like this, all right, um, I want a melee that I can use for heavy attacks. So the new glaives are really awesome for this. Um, I didn't show that build on the Corona Prime here. Let me show that off one sec. I think I was using this healing return build. Um, you don't really need Carnus Mandible on here. Again, I'm not using it for the set bonus. I just like the increased weighted on the slash procs, but um, even if I take it off, I have really good weighting towards slash procs, so it's not that big of a deal. If I could fit it, I would have Sacrificial Steel right there, um, but I'm just using this for now. Um, if I'm fighting enemies with shields, I would use uh, Toxin right there instead, because Toxin damage goes right through the shields, and if I'm not worried about having Healing Return on there at all, I would do this. Um, and this this gets uh, red crits um, with uh, with the ribbon. All right, so back to the glaive. Let me see. Um, yeah, so I think I settled on this one uh, for just my um, for just like a base uh, a good a good build without without Karnas stuff. Um, uh, but when I do have the Karnas on there, um, yeah, this this is the build I go for. Um, and uh, that way, those really powerful um, heavy attacks, you know, uh, trigger the um, trigger the Carnus set mod, Carnus uh, mod bonus. Um, and I was using a uh, the new Proboscis Cernus um, as a primary because you know you don't really you wouldn't use a condition overload primer um, with uh, with a heavy build because uh, first of all. Um, uh, on the glaives, uh, condition overload uh, does not affect the explosion, uh, so no point in running that. So we just have uh, sacrificial pressure, and uh, since I'm not using um, any kind of condition overload primer for utility, I figure what would be the next coolest utility? Uh, group up the enemies with the proboscis cernos, so I can get them all closer together when I trigger the explosion from the glaive, right? Uh, and for this one, I was using. I think I went ahead and did matter eye for the extra physical and elemental damage because I don't really need the energy um, and I obviously don't need the combo um, uh, duration or anything so yeah that's what I'm going for on the um, on, on my Karnas setup um, so um, I'll go ahead and want to put on my stat stick secondary just any secondary with um, uh, with the Carnus mod on it, doesn't matter what it is, uh, just so you can get the uh, full 30% um, evasion. So let's go ahead and show off what something like this might look like. Uh, 
So again, I'll hop in here, hit my Qs. Gaze. Steal their guns. I can group them up if I want to. Here you can see the Karnas uh, set bonus going off. Now, as far as the Karnas set bonus goes, um, it will not get triggered if the enemies die from a slash proc from your heavy attack. They have to die from the actual impact of the attack. Um, so that's why Zaku's really great for something like this because uh, he'll strip all the way all the uh, enemy armor and shields away, so you can get right at their health when you um, throw the glaive at them and you can kill them uh, without having to do the bleed procs, even though the bleed procs are insanely powerful. Um, all right, so I'm going to put up uh, two clips of gameplay. Uh, the first one is going to be using this Karnas build, and I'm going to show some Steel Path mobile defense on Corpus, um, just to show that this build is pretty versatile. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, I'm not using a helmet ability on this uh, on this setup. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably put Resonator over his one, uh, just to give him even more "quote unquote" evasion. Right? Um, enemies will shoot more at the Resonator than they will you. Give you some more breathing room. Not have to worry about um, uh, getting your health burst down. Um, and I found that between these two builds, um, the full Umbral build is a little bit more survivable. Um, just having uh, all that armor, a um, little bit of extra um, health and ability strength is just really nice. And it turns out, you know, the 30% extra evasion from the Karnas mod set is not the absolute best thing in the world. Uh, but it's something you can do, and if I were going to pick a frame to do it on, it would be Zaku. I'll go ahead and put up the, uh, the gameplay from a Steel Path Survival uh, with the full Umbral build. And uh, he it can face tank really well with his build. Um, I can kind of just stand in it without really having to worry much about um, getting burst down too much. You know, th there'll be some times if I'm on like mod or something and there's like an acolyte and a nullifier and the nullifier walks over my uh, gaze targets and, and uh, I accidentally fall into the bubble or something like that. You know, in, in that case, you know, I, I can get taken down. Um, but if I'm being careful and um, keeping my abilities up, uh, the survivability is really, really great. So that's kind of an overview of where Zaku's at right now. I think he's really good. I think he's really fun to play. I think he just dominates the battlefield. He really can control the flow of what's happening um, any way he wants to. Um, so give this build a shot. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, stick around for plenty of new content coming up. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.